can't get there that he does this. People, you're looking at, you're, you're getting this all mixed up when you're looking at the Word of God. You think that Israel becomes a nation. It's like the Jehovah's Witnesses. They believed at one time that, 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 that when Israel became a nation that it was the hand of God. Of course, they had to change their doctrine because they sent over their people and they tried to witness to the Jews and the Jews kick them out. Oh, it can't be of God because they didn't accept Jesus as the Messiah. You know what? God deals with Israel. As I've said in the other videos and everything, he, he has to have two witnesses and they're witnesses. They're not of Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Pentecostals or any of the other denominations. Have, have you ever wondered what um, what Malachi means by turning the hearts of the fathers to the children and the let, let, let me reread that again. And, and, and by the way, uh, you probably can see we're cutting in on the video here. I had to stop earlier, so I've come back here this afternoon to, to finish this up. And, and, and quite frankly, is I thank God that this happened because this morning when I started the video, I had really, I, I saw something that just really excited my heart and then only to, to get, get, get a confirmation of this as I uh, did a little research in between the two takes here that, I, that I'm doing this in. So let's look at this again. Now this, especially for the brother that did the video uh, that was taking up a challenge on me, I, I want you to look at this right here. In Malachi, in the, in the Christian Bible, chapter 4, verse... Um, Let's, let's go to verse 4, uh, Malachi chapter 4, verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all the Israel and with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you, Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. What is the heart of the fathers? Who really understands the significance of what is the heart of the fathers? The heart of the fathers is the covenant in which God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And what is that covenant? Thy seed shall possess this land. Now, I'm going to take you to a little place. I'm going to show you something in just a minute. But let's let's go back to where this one brother had mentioned uh, Luke uh, chapter 1. And like I said there again, I, uh, gosh, I should have gone back and looked at his uh, email to me there and looked up that other verse for him as well. But, I, I, you know, to me, clearly, you can't get around the Word of God. Once you begin to see that John the Baptist did not fulfill all of this. He did not fulfill... Everything that's written in here, just like where Jesus says, uh, truly Elias shall first come and restore all things. But I say to you, he's already come, and they did so whatever he listed. And as I mentioned to you already, John was dead. John the Baptist was dead when Jesus said that, but he put a coming of Elijah in the future. And again, I'll repeat it. I do not believe in reincarnation. As I said, is it going to be the literal Moses and Elijah? It very well could be. Very well could be. I tend to lean more towards two men anointed with that spirit. And the reason I do is because um, we see in the scripture when, it, when Eli uh, uh, Elisha received that spirit, it was, they said, does not the spirit of, of Elijah rest upon Elisha? When John the Baptist came in the power of uh, the spirit of Elijah, they understood that Jesus was speaking of John the Baptist, when he spoke of, uh, he actually quotes part of Malachi chapter 4 right here. And, uh, and but we find that as that one brother quoted here, Luke chapter 1 and verse 15. Uh, I believe it's actually verse 16, but let me just look at it real quick. Um, he says here, uh, and he went and joined himself no, excuse me, I'm in the wrong chapter here. Uh, that's chapter 15. I mean to go chapter 1 of Luke. And um, and what does he say here? Verse 15 here. 
uh, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, speaking of John, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb, and many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, which is Elijah. Now he's going to quote the verse. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and, uh, uh, excuse me, turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And he stops. He doesn't quote the second half of Malachi, where Malachi says, uh, Malachi says that too, you know, he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. But then he stops, and the heart of the children to their fathers. The heart of God in the fathers is the covenant that he made with Abraham. So when he turns the heart of the fathers to the children, what's he doing? He's turning the covenant that he made with Abraham to the children. He sent Moshiach. Moshiach is that covenant being fulfilled, turned the covenant that he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, thy seed, every time he keeps talking about the seed, the seed is Moshiach. And he turns the seed to the children. And see, that's why you can only, that's why only part of the verse is fulfilled because Christ, when he came, he fulfilled that first part. Not the heart of the children, back to the fathers. What, he's what is he talking about? Back to the fathers. Back to the covenant. In the latter days, they recognized Moshiach and who he was, and they recognized that the covenant had been fulfilled, and now in the latter days, they begin to recognize what's going on, and they finally get it. In this point, Elijah is pointing them back to the covenant that's been fulfilled. Now do you understand what he means in Malachi 4 here? The heart of the fathers, the very heart. What is it? They all long for that day that Moshiach would come, that the seed would be here. Doesn't the scripture say that the prophets and the sages, they long to see this day that you live in, or the day that they were living in then? They were looking for that time because Malachi had prophesied of it. Now, just to show you what I'm telling you is true, turn to Deuteronomy and go to chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 30, I believe is where that's at. Now again, you're going to find another verse, and you've got to be careful with this, because it's a two-fold part here. When he said, let me back up to say verse 28, and there, and, and there ye shall serve, well let me back up a little further, let's go to verse uh, 26. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you shall soon utterly perish from off the land, whereunto you go over Jordan to possess it. And you shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall surely, oh, excuse me, shall utterly be destroyed. Now he's not talking about when, when Israel would be taken down into uh, Babylon. But he's talking about when Titus would come in and besiege the city. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. See, not just one, not just Babylon. Nations, plural. And you shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether the Lord shall lead you. Few in number. Because why? The Jews have been killed all the way down through time. And there you shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But if from thence, in other words, from there, thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, Thou shalt find him. And if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul, when thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, notice that's two different times. That's even, even that very verse is two different time frames. Gosh. There, there's your Luke 20, or excuse me, uh, Matthew chapter 24. When Jesus speaks about the tribulation, never was on the face of the earth, or never shall be thereafter. Israel went through that tribulation then. 
when Titus besieged the city. But as you go down, we find out later, after the middle, after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall not give her light. You know, people, you, you got to recognize the hour you're living in and, 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 and rightly divide the word of God. When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the, you see, even in the latter days, See, there, let, let, me, let me get this for you in Hebrews so, so maybe you can understand better, you know. I didn't read it right there to start with, but let me, I need to read that because maybe that will help you to better understand. I can only imagine uh, the, the, the verse that is used here in Hebrew or the words that Moses must, uh, must have written on this subject. Um, okay, verse 30 here. If you search for him with all of your heart and with all of your soul. Okay, let's 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 back up here. Let me just see here. Okay. Okay, hang on one second here. I want to find just here. Uh, there you will serve gods, the handiwork of men and wood and stone, which do not see, neither hear, nor uh, and do not eat and do not smell. From there you will seek. Hashem, your God, and you will find him. If you search for him with all your heart and all your soul, when you are in distress and all these things have befallen you, at the end of the days you will return unto Hashem, your God, and hearken to his voice. Now, that's very important here. Uh, let me just real quick here find this over in Hebrew for you. Okay, Misham, from there... At uh, Hashem Aleach uh, Elochayach, who masat ki to the to the to the shenu beko lavech lav excuse me lavechach who excuse me beko who who nifshach with all of your soul. I'm, I'm looking for one particular thing in Hebrew here, and I'm just trying to see if this is in here that I'm looking at here. The, the point that I'm trying to get you to see here is that it's a, there's a separation in time here. And um, maybe it's, let me just catch this back for you again. When thou art in, in tribulation, okay, in verse 30 here, um, Okay, and, and all these things. Yeah, there we go. Ad, okay, Ad Hashem Alecha Ushamat Bekolo. My gosh. What, what did I tell you that, that, that God said to Moses when he spoke to him and he said, if they do not believe the voice of the first sign, they shall believe the voice of the latter sign. They would believe Moses when he returned again. I'll go back to King James for the Christian people's sake here so you can understand this a little bit better here. Um, but if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, and thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul, when thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days. See, when you're in tribulation and these things come upon you. That tribulation was during the time of Titus. But notice, he says, even in the latter days. The latter days and the tribulation are not the same right here. If thou turn to the Lord thy God and shalt be obedient unto his voice. What did God say to Moses? If they don't believe the voice of the first sign, they shall believe the voice of the latter sign. 
And here again we have right here, if, but even in the latter days, if thou shalt turn to the Lord thy God and shalt be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. There is that Malachi chapter 4. Turning the heart of the children to the fathers, he turns them back to the covenant. Moses and Elijah are the only two that can come and turn Israel's heart to get them to recognize that the that the heart of the fathers was the covenant that God had promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when they missed it at the first time when John the Baptist came, forerun Moshiach, and he was turning the heart of the fathers to the children. He was taking and showing them that the covenant is here. And they missed it. Very few believed it then. But in the latter days, they recognized who Moshiach is. And Moses is one of those ones. I mean, people, come on. In closing, let me just say this. Wake up. Get off of these isms. You know, this nonsense about it's got to be Elijah and Enoch. they got to die. Well, then you, the, more people that preach a rapture believe that it's Moses, or excuse me, Elijah and Enoch than anybody I know of. You know, I can understand the people that don't believe in a rapture saying something like that. Gosh, I give them credit. But people like Perry Stone and stuff that sit there and, and claim to believe a rapture and then turn around and say that Enoch's got to come because he's got to die. I mean, come on, wake up! Give me a scripture where God said Enoch would come back. I have proven to you by the word of Almighty God that God put His voice in Moses and He said that He would actually, that they would believe the voice of the latter sign. I've shown you by the word of God that it says in uh, Exodus, the 15th chapter, Asherah Adonai Go'ol. You know, God, Moses sitting there saying, I will, I will sing. He's using a personal pronoun and does it in the future. I will sing that uh, uh, God has gotten victory over his horse and over his rider. One horse, one rider, the Antichrist spirit that comes into the world. And then what do we find? Elijah we have plainly. You have, you have it in Revelation. You have it there. We see on Mount Transfiguration, Jesus with, with three witnesses sees Moses and Elijah. So they're not dead. Of course, I know, I know you believe that, you know, but I mean, that should have, that should have been obvious to you. You know, and, and they're, 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 they're the two olive trees. For God's sake, you, you ever know, for those of you that have never been to Israel before, if you go to Israel and you go to the area where Jesus would pray across the Kidron Valley, where he'd resort to pray there, there's two olive trees there that have been dated by Jerusalem's university there by doing something with the roots. I don't know how they do this or whatever, but when they dated it, those, olive, those two olive trees are two, over 2,000 years old. You wonder where Jesus was doing his praying? And why is there two trees that are that age? You know, I believe that they're a type of Moses and Elijah. And of course, he met them there anyway. Not saying he met them in that particular spot, but you know what I'm saying. You know, the scripture is plain. And let me say this also in closing. One last thing I want to really point out to you. I've told you in the past, the covenant with the Vatican is one of your biggest signs that tribulation is at the door. Shimon Perez is on a diehard How can I say it? He is, he's, he's determined to make a covenant with the Vatican. He started back in 1993, and he's not young. He's 89 years old, if I'm not mistaken. That's how old he is right now. But he's determined to get that covenant done. He is determined to fulfill what his calling is. And God swore that he would do this to Ahab's son. And Ahab married Jezebel, and Shimon Perez is marrying Jezebel, the spiritual side of Jezebel, that harlot of Revelation, chapter, uh, what is that? I forget in Revelation. And yet God warned our people, come out of her, my people. Be not partakers of her sins. And I know that you can apply that in Christianity as well, but let me tell you something. It applies to Israel more so, and we also have it in the Torah as well to come out of her. 
Jeremiah, it's in the Tanakh, when, when uh, the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 50 to 51, he says, come out of her, my people. Just like it says in John in Revelation chapter uh, 18, verse 4, I believe it is. You know, why? Because Israel makes a covenant with them. But the 144,000, you don't see the 144,000, they're virgins. That doesn't mean it's a bunch of men going out and, and you guys got to get over that one as well. It means that they're not married in to any such nonsense. When Christ comes, they're a chaste virgin waiting upon him. That's what they're waiting for. Moses and Elijah bring them out of the, out of, out of the traditions that they're under. And they point them to, they take the children and they point them to the heart of the father. They turn the heart of the children's to the heart of the father's. They fulfill that part of the verse that was not fulfilled before. Elijah does that. He points them back to the covenant that God had made. And Moses is there to be able to help do that. It is later than you realize. You have no idea. If God took, just remember what we talked about at the beginning, when Ahab married Jezebel, immediately Elijah comes on the scene and shuts the heavens that it rained not in the days of his ministry. You got it right there in Revelation 11. Their ministry, they close up the heavens. They turn the waters to blood. Do you know what the tribulation is that's coming on the earth now? Everybody has got this crazy idea. Oh, it's going to be the Jews. They're going to be under tribulation. No, it's going to be the Gentile church. And I say the Gentile church. You know, there's a lot of people, they look at that scripture and they say, well, the church goes into tribulation. You know what? You're right. Most Christians Professing Christians go into tribulation because they rejected Jesus, Yeshua, as being Mashiach to know who he really is. And they do go into tribulation. Maybe that's why it looks so confusing. You are right about that. The church does. But the bride of Jesus Christ, those that are called out, that have separated from all of these systems that are out there. And I'm not telling you to don't go to church. I'm just simply telling you that they've separated from the nonsense. That's his bride. And she doesn't go through tribulation. So when you want to think that the church goes into tribulation, I have to agree with you. A lot of them do. There's going to be so few that will be missing. It's not even going to be funny. No wonder why it says, what is it, Isaiah 57? They don't take it to heart. They just don't get it. Because such a small number go. God bless you. I pray this has helped you. Understand, I'm not playing church anymore. I don't have time for it. And I appreciate you so much. I love you so much. I want to see you ready, and I want to see you take this hour serious. And if you don't know, if you're Jewish and you don't know Yeshua, if you don't know Him, if you're watching this and you're Jewish, there's many Jews I know that watch it, you don't know Him, as Moshiach, the only form of salvation that's coming to this world. You, you can call me. You can find my phone number. It's easy enough to find on the internet. But I'll do everything I can to help you. You can give your life to Him and Him save you. You don't have to have somebody pray through with you, but if you need somebody to pray through with you, I'll gladly pray through with you. All you got to do is write me and, and, and give me your phone number. I'll call you. I'll pray with you. Because my desire is to see as many people recognize Jesus Christ as Messiah. If you're a Gentile and you don't know Him as your Savior, I encourage you with all my heart, this is the time to get your life in. And it's not just reciting some sinner's prayer. I, I, you know, I believe it's just you, you know, you're, you're no further from God. If you're backslid, you're no further from God than what it takes for your knees to hit the ground and to repent and ask Him sincerely from your heart, forgive you. You don't have to have a bunch of fancy words or try to figure it all out. Just simply ask Him to forgive you and to save your soul. Cry out with all your heart like as if you were going to be dying the next morning. You know, if you were on death row and they're going to put you to death and you knew you needed to get to God and you needed to be saved, I think that's the way you should cry out to Him. And I just encourage you, you know, don't be playing around any longer. We don't have time, people. We don't have time. And I know 
when my people recognize who Yeshua is, and that mourning begins to happen over there in Israel, you know, and, and the brother on uh, Facebook, I, brother, I can't for the life of me see with all the promises. There's a book I wrote called Israel, Are They Still God's People. I would encourage you to get it and read it. And that book there, and I really didn't go into it as much in here as probably what I should have because it's kind of a different subject altogether. But I go into such depth of Israel and the promises. She's there in her homeland. I know it's confusing because truly, when they go to build the third temple they're going to do now, that's not God's doing. That's going to be Satan trying to put something up to get Israel to fall for it. So I know it looks confusing there, but you have to understand he still has a remnant there and he brought them home for the purpose for, for forgiving them and forgiving their iniquities, as Daniel said. Yes, they are there. And yes, it is the hand of Almighty God that they're in that homeland. And before you speak against it, you need to really take serious consideration how dangerous that is. I'd, I'd send you the book for free if that's what. If you don't have the money and you need it, I'll send it to you. God knows at my heart, I want to help people is my desire. And there's people that, that are kind enough to give to this ministry that that just helps us to be able to do something like that. In fact, there's a brother that I promised him I'd send him one. I, and I'll tell you another thing. I wish Brother Tom up in the uh, Chicago area there, I believe he's up there around near Chicago, he had called me the other uh, earlier, was it yesterday? I believe it was. And... And we talk quite a bit about this very subject. I wish I could have recorded that conversation. Such an inspiring conversation we had together. God bless him. God bless his family. His son Joshua. I wish I knew his wife's name. Uh, but God bless all that family there. Anyway, God bless each and every one of you. And I'm glad that you uh, took the time to listen. And uh, keep pressing the battle. Seeking. My gosh, brother, sister, pray. Get in his presence. Pray till you get into his presence. And when you get into his presence, worship him. Worship him and then ask what you will. God bless you. Baruch haba. Amen. Thank you for watching this broadcast. If you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can send your tax-free gift to Danoon Institute at 12537 Gemstone Crescent, Fort Myers, Florida 33913 or you can give securely online at www.israelreturns.com. For more resources, visit our website again at www.israelreturns.com. Also, please visit our YouTube channel, Ben Denoon. We would like to thank some of our valued friends for making this broadcast possible. Thank you for being with us. We trust that tonight's program has been a blessing.